everyone for uh, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Uh, this is part two of uh, solar battery. Okay. Uh, after you have watched the part one, you roughly understand the, the most easier use uh, SLA battery. Yeah. Uh, AGM type. Um, normally, our customers beginner they will use that, and after that, uh, they use the uh, SLA AGM type of battery for two to three years, which is the uh, first battery. First solar battery. Uh, then later on, the battery need to be changed. Normally around two or three years. Uh, they will give normally they will give us a call back. They say, hey, my battery now is not working very well, and I think uh, you know need time to change. Uh, what is your recommendation? Uh, most of the time they will say that oh, I think the battery is very expensive. You were right. For a solar uh, for an off grid solar system, the most expensive is the most challenging part. The most problematic part is the battery. So basically, uh, they begin to understand actually a solar system uh, to be affordable, to be have a good uh, return investment is always to is about the battery and how you maintain the battery. Yeah. So after two or three years, uh, they already have the experience, the know how about a solar system, and they understand the weather very well, and understand the bad weather, the good weather, how the sun charge the you know the battery and things like that, how to use the power of the solar system, how to do the calculation. Basically, after two or three years, um, you use a solar system, you are no longer a beginner. Uh, you know about solar power, and during that time when you call back. Normally, we will ask you a few more questions and then talk to you. And most of the time, we feel that all right, you understand your understanding of solar system is quite well. So now we're ready to bring you to the next level. In the next level, you always to explain to you uh, after the SL battery, do you have a better battery? Uh, the answer is yes. A better battery in the sense is more affordable. Uh, when you use it in the long run, uh, is more a better return on investment. Uh, at that time, we will normally will tell you that the battery to use after you have the experience is always a flood battery, yeah, a deep cycle flood battery. Uh, when we use the flood battery, uh, basically is in other words, you need to add the uh, battery water, yeah. So, like for example, this one is the uh, famous T one O five. It's a Trojan. T105, uh, deep cycle flood battery. Yeah? A lot of people will call up and ask, hey, I want a deep cycle battery. And deep cycle battery is going to be uh, no, no need to add battery water. It's going to be a uh, maintenance rate. Oh, come on, there are no such thing as a deep cycle battery. Okay, Deep cycle means that when you can cycle to 80 to 90 percent, that's called deep cycle. But maintenance rate, there are no such thing. Yeah, Because when you cycle so deep, definitely. Um, the acid inside or the chemical inside, uh, battery water inside is going to be dried out. So that's why you need to uh, pour it back. So a deep cycle battery is always need to add uh, battery water. It's always a flood battery. Yeah? So there is no the other round. Let's say some company do claim that they are deep cycle maintenance fee. I would say that there's marketing. But really do in solar, I, I don't believe the battery will last. Yeah? Okay, just get back to this. Okay, this is a deep cycle. It's a flood battery. In other words, it's a flood. When you use your controller, or your charger, you always need to set it off FLR, flood battery, full stop, yeah, it's flood, yeah. Uh, AGM SLA is SEL, seal, okay, SEL or SLA, they are the same, yeah, all right. So a flood battery is always you need to add, uh, you can open up the cap here, okay, basically, uh, you add uh, battery water in. Normally, it's uh, depend on how fast the charging and how well you use the power yeah from our experience most of the time is every three weeks three to four weeks you always need to add back uh, the battery water yeah okay when you compare to this uh, kind of flood battery deep cycle uh, with uh, flood battery uh, I would like to use the word flood battery versus uh, AGM or SL battery you will find out the flood battery always costs less. It's all in other words, always cheaper. Yeah. Um, this one compared to the first video. The first video is SLA. That one is uh, 100 AH 12V. This one is actually uh, is 225 AH but 6V. Yeah. 225 6V. Basically, when you use it, you need to use two pieces yeah, for a 12V solar system. Yeah. So let's say if you are using a 24V system. 
solar system, that means you need to use four pieces, yeah. For a 12V solar system, you use two pieces of this, yeah. So you 6V plus 6V, 225, that means it's 225 12V, yeah. Okay, but when you look at the price, uh, definitely a flood battery is always cheaper, all right, cheaper than the SLA battery. Then let's talk about performance wise. Pricing is cheaper. Performance wise, I would say that this battery definitely will beat uh, any SLA or AGM battery. Why? Is because first of all, uh, charging is faster. Yeah. Because when is you continue add battery water, that means the iron inside uh, the battery pack and you know, is always higher. The iron I'm talking about iron positive uh, is iron. So because of when the iron is faster, the charging is faster. Yeah. And the way they design the battery pack, especially Tojen. The secret of their battery is always on the battery pad, uh, battery pad design. So if you have used SLA battery before and you change to use a Trojan battery or flood battery, you will find out the charging is much, much faster compared to SLA battery. In other words, uh, it's more efficient. Yeah, it's more efficient. Yeah, you will charge even faster. Some last time when you use an SLA battery, you only see the controller start to bang especially on the uh, battery side, that means it's 90% full, it starts to blink, roughly about noon time, yeah? But when you use a Trojan battery or flood battery, this one, sometimes you will get, uh, started to blink at about 10 o'clock. That means, in other words, it charge uh, much, much faster, yeah? Performance, it charge faster. Second thing, let's look at about the uh, DOD, yeah? Just like, I think in the part one, you learn about the DOD. So, here again, I have the data sheet of this Trojan uh, T105. I will just try to let you see and zoom in. Okay, this is typical live uh, in stationary application. Uh. So you can see, um, again, this is a deep cycle battery. Uh. You can uh, cycle it to uh, 100%, uh, but of course, this is not recommended. Uh. Yeah, just now, like what I mentioned, is like, for example, you compare to SLA battery, SLA battery, you always cycle around 20 to uh, 30%. All right, it's ideal so that you get longer cycle. But when, when you cycle more than you know fifty percent or eighty percent, you basically you will damage the battery. But for this kind of deep cycle battery, flood battery, you can cycle as high as at a uh, hundred percent. But I think uh, this one I would not recommend. I would say that as high as eighty percent uh, is already good enough. Yeah. So let's say uh, if we follow back uh, just now the part one example. Let's say we cycle uh, roughly about twenty percent here. All right, twenty percent. Okay. Basically, you are looking at about 3,000 cycle, yeah? So now that one is 20% is roughly about uh, 1,004. This one is 3,000 cycle, yeah? But um, but one thing about this uh, flood battery, they, deep cycle battery, they always can, like I said, uh, they can cycle very deep uh, without uh, damaging the battery. But let's say if you really go and cycle 100% until it flat, uh, you still can use roughly about 500 cycle. That means about one year plus, yeah? But let's say if you cycle around 20%, 225 AH, is 3000 cycle, yeah? So basically, it's more than five years, right? This will last more than five years. Like I say in the part one, how much you spend on the battery and how long you can use it and you divide per day, then definitely you'll find out this battery is cheaper. A smart, affordable, and better uh, return in, uh, of investment. Again, you have to be very careful, like I mentioned in part one, is that this kind of data sheet is look nice on the paper, on the paper, yeah. But in the actual application in solar, is again this one is on twenty five C, yeah. The temperature is on twenty five C, yeah, twenty five Celsius, yeah. On paper, it look fantastic. But in real life, in solar application, you go out there, it's damn hot, all right? And even in Malaysia, the room temperature is already more than 25 C. It's probably about 30, all right? Like 27 to 30, yeah? But let's say you take this kind of battery and put it outdoor, well, as high as sometimes 40, 50 uh, degree. Like I mentioned in part one, let's say it's a temperature rise from 25 Celsius to 35 Celsius. Basically, you need to cut the life into half. But let's say it's from 35 to uh, 45, you need to cut the half again. But let's say if you install a solar system the outdoor without a good uh, protection on the heat, you know, let's say the 
direct hit, hit the battery or let's say you build a metal can casing compartment and just let it out there uh, the temperature inside the metal casing or in your battery block is just like you go inside uh, your car during the hot day yeah let's say you park your car outside uh, when you go inside to your car the first thing you always need to you know uh, wind down your window and quickly turn on the aircon but the temperature like that kind of temperature is always uh, temperature inside your metal, metal casing or your battery box or your battery compartment it's so hot okay if you put a thermometer there uh, basically you are talking about uh, 40 to 50 C all right let's say if you install a solar system in 40 to 50 C basically you are very very hot okay so like I said 25 to 35 cut it to half all right 35 to 45 you cut it to half when you cut it half 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 basically you will see actually the temperature is basically a killer it's a killer to your battery yeah the higher temperature the shorten the battery life okay so again I need to warn um, uh, user you always need to put your battery uh, especially in Malaysia in the place whereby it's cooler right when it, it, it cold, it's not so hot, let's say around 25, but 25 is very hard to achieve, all right? Let's say around 30, not more than 35. Basically, uh, let's say, let's go back to the same example. Let's say you can maintain about 30, less than 35C. Let's say we take the worst case scenario, let's say you are in 35C, all right? So, then 200% uh, 200 uh, sorry, 20% uh, cycle, right? 20% cycle here, basically, uh, you're talking about 3,000 3, cycle, all right? 3,000 cycle because of 25C to 35C, basically you need to cut it into half, 3,000 become 1,005, okay? 1,005 basically is, uh, you still get it a very, very long, yeah? But of course, this kind of battery, if you uh, maintain it well, uh, it will last very long, yeah? One thing about uh, a flood battery is got one more advantage, it's better than a lead, uh, SLA battery is because SLA battery is always sealed, all right? It's sealed because SLA is sealed. So basically, you cannot add water, you also cannot see inside. But for this one, basically, you can open up the cap again, and uh, you can use a torchlight uh, you know, or barometer, pop inside, and then you can see inside the battery pack. Let's say it's sulfate build up, uh, you straight away can see a big white spot crystal. Um, let's say that happen, you can quickly uh, use a, a desulfator. Yeah, uh, to uh, to to re repair it, yeah, again, and then prolong the battery, and then in other to in the maintenance wise, prolong the battery is much easier, uh, it's much manageable to do. But I um, need to warn you one caution about this kind of battery. Um, this kind of battery is because uh, it's not sealed, so when during charging, uh, especially if you open up the cap during charging, you can see a bubble build up. In other words, it's gases is build up, so uh, sulfuric acid gas will come up from here uh, it's always need to be you need to be uh, have a ventilation fan or uh, a good ventilation let all this separate acid gas uh, to go up yeah it's not good for human uh, to smell too much of separate acid uh, gas it's because those gas will cause cancer definitely it's gonna be hell hazard so when you uh, use this kind of battery you need to make sure that uh, you have good proper ventilation uh, to ventilate out the software uh, as it gets but other than that this is the battery that uh, uh, is going to be uh, most cost effective uh, to use yeah all right so uh, this is our part two of the uh, solar battery if you have any question uh, please uh, do give us a call or drop us an email yeah so uh, please uh, stay tuned and watch about part three uh, on uh, this, this this part yeah okay this is part two of part three and uh, thanks